Well, the only thing that is scarier than the news is the possibility that they might have it right. Well, the discussion of the randomness of cancer can put you at rest because once again, <laughs> the news media, quick to talk and slow to check, has been basically trumpeting a study published in the journal Science done at Johns Hopkins, which says that most, perhaps two-thirds, of cancer is random. It's luck or bad luck. Allowing that environmental factors play a part, conspicuously absent seems to be the factor that I would like to address with you now, and that's nutrition. Whoa, the N-word. We're back again. Orthomolecular or nutritional therapy has been used by physicians against cancer for a very long time. In case you think I'm making this up in my spare time, I'd like to remind you of the work of Dr. Hugh Reardon, Dr. Ewan Cameron, or Ewan Cameron, and the work of Dr. Max Gerson, the work of Linus Pauling, and the work of Dr. Abram Hoffer. These gentlemen, together or separately, have shown that nutrition fights cancer, and they've even used it to cure cancer. To learn more about this, I'd like to suggest that you do a Google search, and you put the word orthomolecular in there, orthomolecular, in your search for cancer and nutrition. Or go to DrYourself.com, where you will have access to articles about the work of these people. But let's get back to the important thing. The important thing is, what can you do? If cancer is bad luck, well, you can't do anything. And if cancer is good luck, well, it's sort of like the lottery. Albert Einstein said, rather famously, that God does not play dice with the universe. In the old days, people attributed luck or chance to a lot of things. I imagine if you lived in a city in the Middle Ages and the bubonic plague came through, the Black Death would seem like luck. After all, it killed half or even two-thirds, a figure rather close to the amount that cancer is supposed to be uh, due to luck and caused by. If two-thirds of the people in your city were killed by the Black Death and you weren't, if two-thirds of the people you know or two-thirds of your family were killed by the Black Death and one-third wasn't and you didn't know why that was, you couldn't account for it. So you tend to use randomness or luck. When children, little children, go to a picnic, if it turns cloudy and starts to rain, they would say, that's bad luck. But if you had earth science students from high school level in there who had learned a little bit about predicting the weather, they might have checked the forecast that morning or watched the wind and the clouds that morning, and they wouldn't be surprised because they know that rain is due to a change in climatic conditions. It's not luck at all. Science is going out of its way to try to reduce the luck and increase the knowledge. And the more we know, the less random things appear. An example of that would be my children. When my son was little, he liked to get into the candy that we had for Halloween. Now, we didn't allow him to eat colored candy, admittedly. And I'm sorry to say that we did give that out at Halloween because, quite frankly, other kids expected it. If you give them raisins and yogurt-covered peanuts, it just doesn't fly very well. So we would buy the junk candy simply to be part of the Halloween tradition, and we were along with the neighborhood, and everybody was happy, except, of course, my children who only got their junk candy when they went out looking for it, which they were quite adept at doing. Well, they couldn't wait until the 31st to get their illicit candy. So my son uh, pointed out to us how frequently the bags of candy that we purchased had defects in the bag. And sure enough, along the seam in the cellophane wrapper, there was a split. And clearly the glue had not done its job. The wrapper was made wrong. And Apparently, some of the candy leaked out. Hmm. You with me on this? 
Years later, I got the truth out of my son, voluntarily, I'm happy to say. He's an ethical young man, and he owned up to it. And he said, well, actually, um, <laughs> he took a, a, a knife and kind of opened that up to make it look as if it was just happenstance. Now, this is important. If cancer is caused by luck or bad luck, Finding the cure will probably be an even bigger matter of luck. We've been after a cure for cancer for decades now, and quite frankly, if there was a cure for cancer, you would have heard about it. Unless, of course, the cure was nutritional. I refer you again to Ewan Cameron, Linus Pauling, Abram Hoffer, Hugh Reardon, and others who have actually used nutrition to reverse cancer. And don't forget the Gerson therapy, which is the original orthomolecular therapy, using nutrition before supplements were even available widely back in the 30s and 40s. So how about uh, luck? Is it luck? Is it random? Or is there a purpose behind all this? If you've ever watched a magician and they tell you that they have a ordinary deck of cards, and you should pick a card at random because it's a perfectly ordinary deck of cards. Don't you start to think that maybe they know something more than you do? For example, here is an ordinary deck of cards. See, you can get all the different suits there, there they are, all the different ones. Now, the funny thing about this is that if you know something about it, you realize, whoa, um, they're, they're not ordinary. Oh, did he switch decks? Here, let's do that in plain sight. Do, 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 do. Ordinary deck of cards. See, look there. Just you can fan through and see all the different suits, right? So you would think, well, why is he saying that this is not ordinary? Well, that's why. Incidentally, uh, my first paid gig as a semi-pro magician was when I was 12, and I got the astonishing sum of $5 to do a birthday party. Wow, that was great. I am neither pen nor teller. I'm a long way from Thurston and Houdini, or Blackstone, or Doug Henning. But I can tell you this. It's not luck, and here's the proof. The discussion by Johns Hopkins says, basically, and I'm going to read this, a combination of luck, hereditary, and lifestyle choices have all been linked to cause cancer. Note the word nutrition's not in there. But a new study published in the journal Science finds that luck, or random DNA mutation, during cell division is the primary factor behind more cancers than previously thought. And Johns Hopkins actually had a spokesperson who said that probably two-thirds of cancer is due to bad luck. Let's take a look at the key statement in that overall summary. Luck or random DNA mutation. Right. What we really want to know is what will prevent DNA from mutating or repair DNA if it does. Now you might be thinking, wow, can the body do that? And the answer is yes, yes it can. I've taught cell division and cell biology to more students than I can quickly name at all levels from seventh grade uh, through college, even postdoctoral. And I'm here to tell you that it is remarkable, really, that DNA can replicate and do it so well, especially when ultraviolet or chemicals or malnutrition or other factors can cause DNA to mutate. But the fact is mutations happen all the time. It's inevitable. DNA is a huge molecule. It's just enormous. And even if we're 99.999% accurate, there's still going to be that 0 0.0001 when it isn't. And most mutations are bad. Guess what? Your body's already figured that out millions of years ago. Two vitamins are key in preventing and repairing mutation. One is niacin, and the other is vitamin C. Niacin and vitamin C actually help to repair mutation of DNA. 
This means that if you have the bad luck, there's something you can do about it. The only way I would go to Vegas and gamble would be if I had my own cards. Well, when you're up against something like cancer, mankind's most feared disease, you don't want to just spin the wheel, do you? Dr. Atsuo Yanagasawa in Japan worked at Fukushima with people that were going into the hot area knowing that they would have radiation damage. These people, nevertheless, were agreeing to do that. Sort of like Chernobyl. These are real heroes who take that kind of a chance, wouldn't you say? Well, Dr. Yanagasawa thought it'd be nice to take a look at the science and see if vitamins help prevent and repair mutations, and that it's been shown, particularly in mouse studies. You don't go experimenting on people like this, at least not ethically. But Dr. Yanagasawa thought, well, they're going in anyway. Let's pre-treat them with high doses of vitamin C. So he gave them very high doses of vitamin C intravenously. He pre-treated them and checked for cancer markers before they went in. He checked for around 31 cancer markers, gave them the pre-treatment of vitamin C, and in they went. When they came out, he rechecked them over some time and found out that they had very little, if any, elevation in cancer risk, according to these markers. People that did not get pretreatment were starting to ask Dr. Yanagasawa, hey, can we get in on this? And he said, yes. And he gave them post-treatment. That is, he gave them intravenous vitamin C and oral vitamin C after. And these people already had elevated cancer markers. Probably that's what motivated them to get the post-treatment. After exposure to radiation, high-dose vitamin C therapy intravenously lowered the cancer markers after exposure, after DNA was damaged. There are actually chunks of free DNA that they can follow. It's not good to have chunks of uh, free DNA. It's supposed to be all together in a nice orderly double helix. It looks like a ladder in a firehouse. Looks like two ladders together in a firehouse. Vitamin C actually caused the DNA to repair. It didn't merely prevent radiation damage, which it did. It also repaired radiation damage. Now, this is wildly important. Absolutely, positively essential that we know about this. I would like to say to you, that the news, our government, our medical people, would serve us better if they would give us the whole story. And as long as they ignore therapeutic nutrition for prevention and cure of cancer, well, it's sort of like going into the ring to fight the heavyweight champion with both your hands tied behind your back. One hand is tied behind their back because they don't know what they're doing. If they did, after decades, they'd have a significant drop in cancer, and they don't. And now they're actually saying, well, it's just luck. No, 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 no. They tie the other hand behind their back because they don't look into nutrition. Fortunately for you and me, doctors already have. Real doctors, Linus Pauling, Abram Hoffer, Hugh Reardon, Max Garrison, and others that have actually seen, like Dr. Yanagasawa, who is a medical doctor as well as a PhD, have also seen, like Dr. Yanagasawa, that vitamin C prevents and actually repairs radiation damage to DNA. That's the part of the story that you need to know, and that's the part that's so encouraging. So once again, use the media backwards. If they ignore talking about something, probably that's what you should look into. If they say it's just luck, you know it's not. Nobody knows the future. There's no sure answers. There's no guaranteed cures. But before I went into a Vegas casino, I would bring my own cards. I think I'd bring these. <laughs> So enjoy watching the news if you must, but read about Dr. Reardon, Dr. Hoffer, Dr. Gerson, Dr. Cameron, 
and Dr. Yanagasawa. If you go to DrYourself.com, you can download the full Dr. Reardon protocol, free of charge, in its entirety. That gives details written for physicians on how cancer is treatable with vitamin C and exactly how to do it. That's Dr. Reardon's protocol, R-I-O-R-D-A-N, free download at DrYourself.com, which is a peer-reviewed website. And I have a presentation, a PowerPoint-style presentation, also for free download by Dr. Yanagasawa himself, where he explains how vitamin C repairs DNA damage. This is great news. Happy 2015. Hope you have a really healthy year. Take care. Take C. Maybe some niacin.